Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. I'll be honest, I probably should have skipped tech news this week, not because no tech news happened, quite the opposite in fact, as there were huge announcements for the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series and an announcement of an announcement date from AMD's Radeon team, but I have been ensconced here in my newly built benchmarking cave, plugging away to get some test results for unspecified new PC hardware, which may or may not be launching in the next 24 to 48 hours. So hopefully you'll forgive me if the tech news is mostly tech briefs this week, as I need to conserve my strength for multiple tasks that still need to be completed. And on that note, why not a quick pick-me-up? Ooh, yeah, that's the stuff. Shut Now, just to be clear, you guys, I do not condone illegal substance abuse of any form, but I just couldn't help myself this week. I had to try some of that crack NVIDIA was smoking when they chose the price points for the RTX 4080. It's potent. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by the new FX series of cases and CPU coolers from Be Quiet, combining addressable RGB lighting with legendary build quality, top tier performance, and near silent operation. The Pure Base 500 FX can fit up to a 360 millimeter all-in-one or tall air coolers while keeping things chilly thanks to airflow optimized top and front panels. The Pure Loop 2 FX liquid cooler comes in three sizes and supports all modern mainstream CPUs, and the Pure Rock 2 FX air cooler can handle up to 150 watts TDP with style and ease. Be Quiet FX series products are suitable for any build in need of a functional and tasteful RGB upgrade, so click the sponsor link in the video description for more. To segue from that intro, last week's tech news was actually demonetized, so just to be crystal clear folks, uh, this is powdered sugar. I'm using a Blue's Clues buck for my straw and drugs are bad, okay? I actually have no idea how crack is even consumed or smoked or whatever, but besides, today is about the natural high that we all get when perusing the tech news. So let's start with a big update to the big board. Here is how things looked last week, and here is how things are looking this week. With confirmation now that AMD's Radeon 7000 series GPUs will be announced on November 3rd, we can now update that column, as well as the now confirmed NVIDIA GeForce RTX 40 series, which will debut with the launch of the RTX 4090 on October 12th, with the disastrously overpriced RTX 4080s coming in November. That leaves Team Blue as the only entry here without an update, but give it two days. We're expecting announcements, hopefully for ARC 5 and 700 series GPUs, as well as 13th gen core CPUs at Intel's innovation event on Tuesday, September 27th. They will be attempting to cut through all the Ryzen 7000 series and AM5 launch news and reviews to point out that, hey, Intel makes PC hardware too. Just don't ask them about that summer 2022 ARC launch window that they just missed. Summer might be over, but that still burns. But the biggest burn this week, if online discourse is to be believed, was the one NVIDIA perpetrated on its potential customers with the GeForce RTX 40 series announcements, which I covered on Tuesday. There was already widespread expectation that NVIDIA would not be selling the new cards at bargain basement prices, but their decision to mark up the RTX 4080 16 gig by $500 over last gen, while simultaneously calling the RTX 4080 12 gig an RTX 4080 at all, a card whose specs would have clearly placed it at least a tier down in the stack in any previous generation, as in it should have been a 4070 class card, seems to have rubbed just about everyone who isn't an NVIDIA stockholder the wrong way. And they're charging 900 bucks for it to boot, a $300 to $400 increase over the RTX 3070 or 3070 Ti. That's for a card with a 192-bit memory bus. There's no Founders Edition 4080 12GB either, further indication that this was not originally supposed to be an 80 class card, and even one of the more well-received announcements, the debut of the frame rate boosting DLSS version 3.0, is tainted by the requirement to use one of these new 40 series cards, which are very expensive, if that point wasn't made clear yet. The cards all have higher power supply requirements too, and no NVLink support as SLI appears to be truly dead. And so so people have been piling on with the memes which have been fruitful this week, whether they reference the theoretical extended product stack, the poor stats on paper, or Nvidia's apparent stance with regard to customers. CEO Jensen Huang did elaborate a bit during press interviews as the week progressed, claiming that Moore's Law is dead and we shouldn't expect double the performance for the same price every year or two anymore. And you know, he actually does have a point on some level but it's lost amidst the public frustration over the feeling that NVIDIA is trying to trick us all with their product names and price points. 
those feelings are also overshadowing the actual performance gains that the RTX 40 series seems likely to bring, with an NVIDIA press demo showing some excellent performance in Cyberpunk 2077 with DLSS 3.0 running at up to 2850 MHz at stock with temps around 50 degrees Celsius. Notable is the fact that DLSS 3.0 is not just increasing the frame rate here, but also allowing the GPU to use about 25% less power. There are a ton of newly announced partner card designs too that range from your classic three-fan, four-slot brick with some RGB lighting to your more reserved three-fan, four-slot brick without RGB lighting and some ridiculous names such as the Dark Obelisk Support Bracket or of course, Palette's Game Rock Midnight Kaleidoscope, which I actually think goes beyond absurdity to the point where I actually kind of like it. When these cards actually launch though, the question is, will they sell? And that could be a tough ask given the current market conditions, the steep launch prices, and the fact that there are now so many competitively priced alternatives up for sale on the new and used market. GPU prices have now been cut in half since the beginning of 2022, which is great news for anyone who doesn't have 900 bucks to spend on a rebadged RTX 4070. Sorry, RTX 4080 12 gig. And meanwhile, over in AMD land, we have the quiet before the storm, as the world waits for AM5 to launch this week. Well, it's been mostly quiet. AMD themselves posted these benchmark results on Wednesday, with new world records achieved by an AIO-cooled Ryzen 9 7950X CPU. I was actually at this event and saw their XOC team hit several of these scores, impressive since LN2 or other exotic cooling methods weren't used. Three records for Cinebench and one for 7-Zip were made public. It's likely that after launch we'll see these scores surpassed quickly as professional overclockers get their LN2 pots set up. But who knows, some might already be set up and ready to go if they grabbed a 7950X early. It seems China's Goofish platform has seen listings for the flagship Zen 4 CPU a week ahead of launch. going for about 850 US dollars. The rest of the CPUs in the stack have also showed up at a retailer in France, but guys, just be patient. There's only like a couple more days and then you can buy them from a legitimate retailer for the MSRP. Also, you won't have to wait for them to ship from China. Time for tech briefs. They're short. GTA 6 is official now whether Rockstar likes it or not, as one week ago a huge dump of videos and other in-development content dropped that was just too detailed to be fake. And indeed it wasn't, as Rockstar has now confirmed that one of their employees was fished by a hacker who obtained access to the confidential GTA 6 info. You can't blame Rockstar for playing their cards close to their chest for unannounced games in general, but they seem to have made the best of the situation by not attempting to deny it and simply expressing their disappointment and intent to continue development of this ongoing project. And who knows, maybe the next Grand Theft Auto will include a special mission about how stealing is bad. If you hate having to physically interact with your PC in order to wake it from sleep, Intel has a solution for you. The new Raptor Lake platform will apparently be able to use Wi-Fi proximity sensing to wake your PC up when you approach it and sit down at your desk, and likewise put it back to sleep within 30 seconds if you get up and walk away. This raises questions, of course, like what if your cat or dog want to get a gaming session in while you're out running errands? But Intel says there is a hardware requirement for the CPU to get it to work, so it likely won't be rolled out for older platforms or hardware. But if my PC learns to sense when I am near, does that mean it will also miss me when I'm away? These are the real questions. The EVGA bombshell from last week has been reverberating this week as NVIDIA proceeds with their 40 series plans, and many have speculated if things would be any different were EVGA still in the GPU market. Igor of Igor's Lab weighed in with an editorial on Monday, providing a slightly more critical take on EVGA's decision that pointed out a few things like the fact that EVGA's 5% margin was among the lowest in the industry, and that EVGA themselves were not above making some questionable decisions in the past too, such as blacklisting Tom's hardware back in the Kepler days when they wouldn't guarantee positive reviews. It was also likely a great time to cash out their chips, metaphorically speaking of course, after the potential profits they may be raked in during the GPU shortage for the past couple years. I do appreciate that there has been a focus on EVGA's employees though, and making sure they have continued support or alternative job opportunities, and that includes professional overclocker Vince Lucido, aka Kingpin, whose brand agreement with EVGA clearly won't be able to continue in the same capacity. Vince indicated in a Facebook post Tuesday that he will continue on and he's open to other opportunities, so who knows, maybe we'll see a Kingpin version of like an Asus GPU, MSI? That would seem a little weird to me, but I'm sure we'll adjust. 
You might not want to adjust your 12VH power plug though, or specifically your multi-plug adapter if you grab an RTX 3090 Ti or one of the new 40 series cards that sports the new power connector, as reports this week are not positive about its durability. First, Gamers Nexus reported on plugs that were overheating or even melting when bent or installed with low clearance, thermal variance, as PCI SIG called it, which was actually brought to their attention by NVIDIA, and now it has been revealed that the 12VH power adapters that allow two, three, or four 8-pin PCI Express power plugs to be used for those with existing power supplies have very limited plug and unplug cycle ratings, as few as 30 per Zotax info page for their four-plug adapter. And while that's not super out of the ordinary for an internal connector, a Molex plug is rated for 30 mating cycles as well, for example, it is a concern since we're now talking about 450 or 600 watts passing through those wires and the fact that it's likely connecting to a GPU that costs upward of $1,000. And even more so for people like me, who test multiple cards and plug and unplug those connectors a lot. Speaking of which, I should probably get back to benchmarking. So that's all for my mating cycle this week, and if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested, and check out my store at paulshardware.net for high-quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more, including my awesome new 8-bit designs. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call, too. Thanks again, everyone. I'm going to do some work and then get some sleep, and we'll see you next week.